गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस दी मॉड्यूल फोर दैट इज अबाउट सैम्पलिंग एंड ओके सो टुडे इज सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अबाउट मॉड्यूल मॉड्यूल फोर एंड मॉड्यूल फाइव बोथ आर इन अ सेम पैराडाइम बिकॉज इन मॉड्यूल फोर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट सैम्पलिंग नेचर ऑफ सैम्पलिंग एंड हाउ वी कैन रिकवर द ओरिजिनल सैम्पल सिग्नल टू अ मॉडलेटिंग सिग्नल एंड वी विल डिस्कस डिफरेंट सॉर्ट ऑफ स्पेक्ट्रम इफ इट इज सेटिस्फाइंग सम क्राइटेरिया दैट क्राइटेरिया इज कॉल्ड एन इक्विस्ट क्राइटेरिया दिज ऑल थिंग You have read your signal system. So once again, I am discussing with respect to the sampling and sampling theorem. Okay. Now in module four, we are going to discuss about sampling theorem. How many type of sampling uh, techniques are there? How can we recover the original modulating signal from the sampled signal? And then in module five, we will see with respect to the different sort of quantization. Okay. These are the two things which we will come across with respect to module four and module five. So both are in the same uh, what I will say in the same chapter, but it was divided into two parts. One is sample and one is quantization. Uh, okay. So here first we are going to discuss about sample. Okay. Sample. Now what does it mean? Sampling itself indicates that a particular signal will be converted into number of samples. How many number of samples? N number of samples depend upon certain criteria. That criteria will decide in how many number of samples we are going to extract the values, and it depends upon your received signal. Okay? A simple example I will show. Suppose this is a particular switch. Okay? This switch is switch on and switch off at a regular time interval of t. Okay, and this particular circuit in which the input side, if I am providing a modulating signal, okay, and this modulating signal is a uh, continuous in nature, like this. This is continuous in nature. So when this modulating signal or our message signal is fed to this particular circuit in which a particular switch is there this switch will switch on and switch off at regular interval of time now who will decide this particular time this particular time period is called the sampling time okay first we will go to the fundamental and then we will go to the mean point so it is sampling time Now, who will decide the sampling time period? The sampling time period is indicated by P S, and as we know, it is inversely proportional to the frequency component, one by F S. So this F S is nothing but twice of F max. Okay, twice of F max. F max means the maximum frequency available in my modulating signal. So, if the frequency of a sample or the regular on and off time period is decided by this uh, T S, which is inversely proportional to F S, where F S is called as sampling frequency. Okay. And who will decide the sampling frequency? It is decided by the Nyquist criterion. Okay. It is called Nyquist. Now, the Nyquist criteria states that your F S is greater than or equal to T F max. Then only we can recover the original message signal from the sample. Now, at the output, let us consider M of N T S. Why am I writing M of N T S? M of N T S means n number of sample. Which are separated at a regular interval of time of T S. Okay, so at this output, the figures will be so here n number of samples will be generated. Okay, n number of And this n number of samples are sampled at a regular time interval of T S. That means 
the time period between one sample to the another sample is called as T S, and this T S is one by F X, and that is two F max. Okay, and this is called as our M of N T S, and this is our time period T. So you can see the continuous signal is converted into the n number of sample signal. Now, n number of sample signal means it is a switch which will sample your signal. Means a number of frames will be generated, equispaced frame. And why it is called equispaced? Because the time period between two pulses or two samples is T S. For T S it will be on. For T S it will be off. Okay. So this will be the time period T S. So this is the basic idea behind our sampling. Okay. Sampling is what? A sampling is a process through which a continuous signal is converted into n number of samples which are continuous in uh, amplitude manner. But with respect to position, those are discrete position. But this is continuous in amplitude. Okay. But positions were identified. N number of positions are identified, and each position will have certain sample. And that sample will say the information present in our message component. Okay. Now the thing will come. Why do we require this linguistic criteria? That is also a big question. Now linguistic criteria states that if my sampling frequency is greater than or equal to twice f max, then only I can recover the original message signal. Means this is my message signal. From the sample signal. The reason we will discuss later on. But for the time being, if this criteria is satisfied, we can recover the modulating signal from this sample signal. Okay. So this is the linguistic criteria. Now why have we done F max? Because sometimes our modulating signal we can assume with respect to single tone. Okay. Now, if my modulating signal is single tone, that means it will consist of only one modulating frequency. So, if there is only one modulating frequency, what will be my sampling frequency? It is twice of f m. Okay. Similarly, if my modulating signal is multi-tone, if it is multi-tone, that means m of t. Is equals to m1 of t plus m2 of t. Two message component or a message component consists of two different modulating frequencies. For example, from m1 we will get f1 and from m2 we will get f2. And for this we consider f2 is greater than f1. Now, if f2 is greater than f1. Then what will be your sampling frequency? Sampling frequency will be twice of f max of f1 comma f2. Then only we can recover the original modulating signal. So how much it will be? So it is twice of f2 because f2 is greater than f1. You have to select the maximum frequency. So your f s is equal to to f2. Okay. So like this, you have to analyze, and these are the fundamental time period is also decided. Fundamental time period means your T S is also called as fundamental time period, and this fundamental time period decide that whatever the samples we are obtaining at the output of this sampler, then it is this whole device. I will say it is called sampler. Or it is back to the switch. Now, depend upon the characteristics of the sampler, you will get your n number of sample output, and these are periodic in nature. Means fundamental time period. The regular interval of time remain constant. At a time period T S, pulse will be available. After the time period T S, pulse is also available. It is not like that. After three T S, again one pulse will be available. Again one something is available. I will not say it is called as a periodic. Periodic means the same information is going to repeat at a regular interval of time. I, mean, I will not say why, because at a time period T S, the amplitude 
of this particular sample is different, after 19 years, the amplitude is different. So that means there is a variation in amplitude. I will not say that this particular sample is called as a periodic signal. I will say this particular signal are equispaced at a regular time interval of period Ts, but the amplitudes are different. In periodicity, what it states? Periodicity states that x of t must be equal to, if I will say, periodicity. Periodicity. Now, everybody knows what is this periodicity. Hmm? x of t is equal to x of t plus capital T where capital T is the fundamental time period. Now x of t if it is equal to after delay or if it is advanced, if you shift that particular value and the amplitude is same for that particular time period, then you will say it is called as a periodic signal. But here we can't say it is a periodic signal. Here after time period t is the amplitude varies. So if the amplitude varies, it does not satisfy the periodicity. Okay? So that is one more important thing. Sample output need not be considered as a periodic signal because in periodic signal your x of t, m of nts is not same after the time period ts. It is different. Okay? So this won't satisfy. So it is a aperiodic in nature. But it satisfied that at a time period ts, our next sample is going to be present. But the amplitudes differ. So if the amplitude differ means it will not satisfy the periodicity of a particular property of a signal. Okay? So these are the fundamental terms through which we can analyze the sample signal. First of all, if it is a sample, provide the modulating signal, we will get n number of sample signal. Okay? Now, how this particular time period of a switch will decide? It is decided by the sampling time period or it is also called as TS. Okay? This TS is called as a sampling time period which is depend upon 1 by Fs. Fs is called as a liquid frequency or liquid rate which is equal to 1 by 2 F max. F max means if it is a multiple signal, it will have only one frequency. So you will get Fs is equal to 2 F max. If it is a multiple signal, identify the individual frequency component available in M of T and then maximum frequency multiplied with 2, you will get the sampling frequency. And this particular frequency will help us to determine this TS. And the TS will switch on and switch off for a time interval of regular time interval of TS. Okay? So this is called a sampler M of T, M of NTS. Okay? So for uh, sampling theorem, there are basically three types of sampling we will discuss. One, instantaneous sampling, second, natural sampling, and third, the flat top sample signal. Okay? The flat top sample signal is also called as a PAM signal, pulse amplitude modulated signal. Okay? So when I am discussing with the uh, flat top sample means we are covering the pulse amplitude modulation. Now, step by step we will see some derivations are there, mathematical analysis are also there. We need to represent the time domain factor into the frequency domain factor for the better analysis. Okay? Those are the long questions. These are nothing but the long questions will come in your exam. Okay? So for sampling theorem consideration, two considerations we have to take. First, reduction of a continuous signal to the discrete signal. Yes. If this particular continuous signal is sampled. Now, discrete, if I will satisfy signal to the discrete signal, that means it is called discretization process. Discretization process states that discrete timeization. Okay? And when it is applied, that also I will tell you what is the application of this whole process, sampling and all. So, first, if my input signal is provided to the sampler, then if the input is provided to the sampler followed by quantization. Okay? Quantizer. Followed by quantizer. Now here, 
the n number of samples we will get the sample is nothing but the switch which will sample at a regular time interval of time ts depend upon the modulating signal then after the sample modulation if these samples are passed through the quantizer quantizer works on a particular criteria on a particular methodology the quantization is done with respect to the fixed position as the word quantized means the pulse is what we are getting at the output of the sampler individual samples are there so in order to convert this sample into a fixed value with a fixed position that is called as a quantization okay so for example if i am considering a sample from this okay if i am considering a sample from this particular signal it is having an amplitude 0.8 and this is having amplitude 0.9 and in the x axis it is a time related to 0.2 and this is 0.25 second so like this so this is 0.2 second this is 0.25 second now what will happen when this sample will enter when this sample enters to the quantizer when it is passed through quantizer later on we will discuss it in a brief manner means in explanatory manner here just i will give you gist of it how it works so when the sample enters to this quantizer the quantizer will identify the position of a particular sample in which the maximum amplitude is available okay so as you can see in this sample maximum amplitude is available at point 9 so he will identify the maximum position maximum amplitude and its position so maximum amplitude is 0.9 and the position is 0.25 then so that means this whole sample is converted into a discrete value so that means the output of the quantizer if i will represent it will look like this how it will contact it's having a two step first identify the maximum amplitude available in the sample and then the corresponding position so maximum amplitude is available say in this point 9 and the maximum and the position is point 5 so result is this 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 is about when the signal is increasing similarly if the signal is decreasing suppose let us consider this particular part like this if the sample is decreasing in this particular manner here the amplitude is let us consider 0.8 and here we let us consider it is 0.75 here it is 0.57 let us consider and this is 0.5 okay so if this is the sample if this is the sample and it is passed to the quantizer it is passed to the quantizer now what will happen it will identify the maximum amplitude present in the particular sample so what is the maximum amplitude 0.8 so maximum amplitude is 0.8 and what is the corresponding position the corresponding position is 0.5 so like this n number of sample will be generated and this is called as a discrete signal in signal system you people have read what is x of n so this m of n here i have represented because i have considered m of t output of the sample i will get m of n t s and it enters to the quantizer so this content will become as a discrete signal so first one is satisfied what reduction of a continuous time signal to the discrete time signal yes this is a continuous time signal okay and this is a discrete time signal 
Okay? And this whole process is called as uh, discretization. This whole process. The discretization is having two steps. First, it will sample your modulating signal, continuous signal. Then it will sample it and resultant will be your discrete signal. So this is the whole process is called as a discrete addition. Now the question comes, what is the use of this discrete addition? In uh, electronic devices, there is an AD converter, analog to digital converter as well as digital to analog converter. When we are using analog to digital converter, this is the heart of that particular conversion. Up to this, discrete levels were identified. These are nothing but discrete signals. Okay? And the quantizer will identify the quantization levels. How many levels are there? And then it will pass through an encoder who will encode the data. Either depend upon the number of binary bits. So if the first sample is represented with a binary bit 000, it depends upon number of levels. If the number of levels is 8, then each level is represented with a certain amplitude. Okay? And those amplitudes will be assigned with certain binary data. And that binary data is a representation of each sample or each discrete value. So those representation is called as an analog to digital conversion. This is my analog signal. After quantization, if I will provide an encoder, it will encode the quantized data. The quantized signals are called discrete value. These discrete values are represented with the certain levels. Those levels will be represented with binary values. And those binary values will help to represent the continuous signal into a digital value. So continuous signal to digital value will have three steps. First, sample. Second, quantizer. Third, encoder. But a discrete addition is having two steps. First, sampler. Second, quantizer, quantizer or you can say quantization. So that output will have as a quantized signal. Now, if these sort of things are happening, okay, this is called as an instantaneous sampling. Okay? If your output of a sample signals look like the uh, position has a fixed amplitude at a discrete position, then you can say it is called as an instantaneous sample. Okay? We will prove all this. For the time being, discretization is having two steps, sampling and quantization. Digitization is having three steps, sampling, quantization and encoding. Okay? That also I will discuss for you so that you can understand properly about this uh, sampling technique, usage of sampling and where it is used. Okay? So, that is called discrete addition. Now, if I can say digitization. Digitization means a device in which I will provide analog signal. Analog signal. And the output will become as a digital signal. Digital signal means binary outputs. 1 and 0, 1 and 0, 1 0 combinations. So this device is called as AD converter, which will convert analog signal into digital signal. But this AD converter is having three basic components. What are the three basic components? First, First is sampler. Output of sampler tenders to be quantized. One time Output of quantizer encode enters to encoding process. Encoding process. And then you will get your digital signal. Okay? So, here M of T is provided to the sampler 
output of the sampler you will get this sort of value that is m of n integers. Okay. Now output of sampler when it is entering to the quantization, as we have discussed, the sample signal will become as a compact signal. Means it will identify the peak amplitude of a sample. After identification of peak amplitude, it will identify its corresponding time period. So corresponding position is this. So like this, your discrete signals you will get. So output of quantizer is m of n. So discrete signal. Okay. Now when it is entering to the encoding, encoding is a process to assign binary bits to the different quantized levels. These quantized signals are represented with respect to certain quantization level, and that level is identified with L two to the power n. Suppose if my quantizer is working for eight levels, okay. Eight levels. Suppose L is equal to eight level. Then now what is this? It is two to the power three. So that means each level is represented with three binary bit. So n is nothing but bits. So if there are eight levels are there, each level is represented with eight bits. So each level is represented with eight bits means what will be the combination of binary bit? The combination of binary bit will be zero zero. Suppose level zero in first level zero 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 one level one zero one zero is level two zero one one is level three the one double zero is level four one zero one is level five one one zero is level six and one one one. So how many levels are there? Eight levels are there. Okay. So if L is equal to, it is present in the quantization. That we will discuss later on by discussing the quantization process and how many types of quantization methods are there. For the time being, just need to understand what is discretization and what is digitization. Discretization means converting your continuous time signal into a discrete time signal with the help of two steps. One. Sampler followed by the quantizer. Okay. Similarly, what is the application of it? The application is our eddy converter. In eddy converter, there are three basic blocks are available in all eddy converter. First, the receive modulating signal, which is analog in nature, which will be converted into the sample signal. Then it will convert into a discrete signal. Then it is entered to the encoding. The whole process is called the digitization. Okay. So here you can see m of t I have provided. Output of a sample is m of n T S. Output of a quantizer is m of n. Then it enters to the encoding. Encoding means assigning the binary bit to the discrete levels. How many levels are? How many levels? If the levels are eight, suppose if l number of levels in which my uh, the sample signals are represented. And we will discuss later on. For the time being, just you need to know that what are the levels. It depends upon this quantized levels. So this quantized level will identify the number of levels. Depend upon the number of levels, this encoder will assign the binary bits to them. Okay? Assign the binary bits to them. So binary bits will be assigned, and it is having a certain range in which this zero zero will be assigned. My discrete value is varies from 0 to 0.5 or 0 to 0.7 or 0 to 0.8. Then also it will assign 0, 0. If it is 1 to 2, if it is lies from 1.5, 1.8, 1.9 also, it will represent as a one number. Okay. Similarly, these discrete positions is having a certain amplitude. Those amplitude will be represented by the binary data and it is represented with the number of levels. If the number of levels are eight, then each level is represented by three bits. For level zero, it will assign zero 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 three bits satisfied. Level one zero zero one. Level two zero 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 one zero. Like that up to level seven. So how many levels are there? There is zero to level seven. Eight levels are there. Each level is represented by three binary bits. Similarly, if the number of levels is 
16. So that means 2 to the power 4. So that means each level is represented by 4 binary bits. So like that the analog signal is converted into the binary data. And once this analog signal is converted to binary data means this whole process is called as digitization. Done. So here I will state that up to quantization the whole method is called this creatization means sample followed by the quantization. But if I will consider from here to here this particular position, then I will say it is called digitization. So this digitization is having two steps. Digitization is having three steps. So digitization sample followed by a quantizer, you will get your discrete signal. So that whole process is called as a discretization process. Many people will get confused between what is discretization and digitization. It is a very simple. Discretization means the continuous signal is converted into discrete signal. That is the method. So what are the two steps? First step is sampling. Second step is quantization. So resultant will become as a discrete signal. Now what is digitization? Digitization will have a three steps. What are the three steps? First, the sampling then quantization, these two combine as a discretization, discrete value provided to the encoder so that you will get your digitization or digital signals. So this is the basic concept behind your digitization and discretization. Now we will discuss about the instantaneous sampling which will satisfy the sampling theorem also. Sampling theorem means it satisfies the Nyquist criteria. There are different criteria are there. If we satisfy it, what will happen? If it doesn't satisfy, what will happen? And how to recover the original modulating signal from the sampled signal? Okay. So here you can see I have written type of sample. How many type of samples are available? First, we will discuss about what is instantaneous sampling. Then we will discuss about the natural sampling. Okay? And then we will discuss about fact of sampling. While discussing, we need to analyze the mathematical expressions. We need to analyze what is the time domain representation, frequency domain representation, and most important thing, whether it satisfies the sampling theorem property or not. Okay? So it will satisfy the Nyquist rate or not. If it is not, then what will be my analysis? If it is greater, what will be my analysis? And how to recover the original signal from the sampled signal? Okay? So step by step we will see. So let me discuss first about the instantaneous. Instantaneous sampling means first a modulating signal needs to be considered and it must be a band limited. If it is not band limited, what will happen we will discuss it later on in this one. Okay? First, the band limited signal needs to be considered so that the bandwidth will be fixed. The bandwidth of modulating signal will be fixed. Okay? So let us consider first we will represent the pictorial representation and then we will go for mathematical representation. Okay. So, let us consider this is my modulating signal, M of band limited modulating signal. If it is band limited modulating signal, its Fourier transform, I can represent with the help of a spectrum that is M of omega omega m 
minus omega m. Okay. So like this, we can represent for band limited signal. Why it is called band limited? Because the bandwidth for this particular signal is omega m. This is the replica of this particular representation. Then next, we need to sample it. For that, I am considering an impulse trip. Impulse trip. Impulse trip which are placed at a regular time interval of minutes. This is your impulse trip. I need to sample this particular signal. So this is your impulse trip. What I will write? Here I will write del of t t minus ts. Okay. So what is ts? Ts is this. This is 2 ts. This is 3 ts. This one is 4 ts. This is minus ts. This is minus 2 ts. This is minus 3 ts. Okay. This is the pulse trip. N ts. Here I can write uh, N ts. N number of samples with the time period ts. So this is delta of N ts. And what is its amplitude? Amplitude is 1. Now when you multiply these two components, means this is your instantaneous sample signal, which is called as a pulse chain, or you can say it is called impulse chain. Let us consider, or let us say it is called impulse train, which are periodic in nature. It is a periodic in nature, which are periodic in nature, at a regular interval of time t s it's repeat and it is having a uniform amplitude that is 1. Now when you multiply these two components you will get your instantaneous sample signal. Okay, let's see. So a sampler here I will consider as a mixer. A mixer in which m of t I am providing here. This is my m of t. Okay, and then in other end I am providing the impulse trip. Impulse trip. This is the impulse trip. This is Ts, 2Ts, 3Ts, 4Ts, 5Ts dot 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 up to infinite. It is minus Ts, minus 2Ts dot 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 up to infinite. So it is del T of T minus N Ts. Done. So when these two signals are provided to the mixer or you can say it is called multiplier. Something it is also called as or I will say it is called multi. So output of this multiplier will achieve a instantaneous sample signal. Now you can see here, this is one sample, this is another sample, this is one as a peak value, then here it is decreasing, here it is decreasing, so like this. So this is one, this is one, and this is one. So here you can say it is called M of N because there is no sample. Means it is quantized signal directly. Why? When you multiply this impulse to any particular function, the resultant will be the, that function at the fixed point. So that function at the fixed point. So this is TS, this is 2TS, 3TS, 4TS. Minus 2 ts minus 2 ts. Then, so this is called as an instantaneous sample signal. This is called instantaneous sample signal. Then, so this is called as an instantaneous sample. This whole method is called as instantaneous sample. Now here what we have considered, first we have considered M of T. Then from this M of T, we are getting FM. Okay? According to this FM, 
the Fs is decided. How much? Twice of Fm. Now once Fs is decided, then we will find out Qs, that is 1 by Fs. And we will generate an impulse train, which is a periodicity of Ts. So this is the periodicity of Ts. Okay? Now when you multiply these two components, you will get these sort of waveforms. This is called an instantaneous sampling. The output of instantaneous sampling is directly it is called as your discrete signal. This all are discrete signal, you can see there is no sample and neither the quantization happens, directly we can generate. So it is called as an instantaneous sampling. Okay? But the discretization states what? First sampling, then quantization, so it is called as a discretization. But in this case what happens? Since we are considering the impulse train, okay, which is periodicity, which are periodic in nature, having a fixed value, when I will multiply to this, I will get instantaneous value. Instantaneous means at the fixed position, fixed amplitude will be there and the output will be continuous with respect to the amplitude. So it is a continuous with respect to the amplitude but discrete with positions. Okay? So this is called as the instantaneous sample. Now we will go through the analysis of this instantaneous sample with the help of mathematical assumptions. Through which we will see that what will happen if it does not satisfy the equistrate, if it is greater than equistrate, less than equistrate, what will happen. Okay? So, here three conditions I will say. First, if Fs is less than 2 f, this is called under sample. Under sample. In this, the overlapping of spectrum will come, that we will just do. Just I am discussing about the cases. Second, if Fs is equal to 2 Fs, okay, this is called Nyquist rate. Nyquist rate. Or I will say it is called critical sample. Okay, and then if Fs greater than 2 Fs, then it is called oversampling. Over the sample. Okay, but there is also some limitations are there, we will discuss that one. Okay, so we need to analyze all of this before. The first modulating signal which must be a band limited signal. Having a fixed band limit. Then next we need to analyze a particular impulse tree which is a periodic in nature having a time period Ts. And that is represented as C of T. That means it is C of T. C of T is equal to summation minus infinite to infinite del of T T minus N T S because it is a periodic sequence, limits are to minus infinite to the infinite. It is an impulse train. Then now we need to multiply these two so that the sample signal will be taken place. So here M of T is provided to the multiplier and the pulse train which is C of T is equal to minus infinite to infinite del T of T minus N T S is multiplied and we are getting S of T or you can say it is called M of N also because the state positions are available with respect to time period so it is I have represented in terms of S of T time period then now once this uh, S of T is identified we need to analyze it we need to justify whether this uh, sampling has done been correctly or not whether it is satisfying the increased rate or not so with the help of that we will identify our outputs for that, I have considered modulating signals. So, as I have discussed, these are the three basic conditions. If Fs is less than 2 fm, under sampling. If Fs is equal to 2 fm, liquid state. Fs is greater than 2 fm, over sampling. It is quite similar to the modulation, critical modulation, over modulation, under modulation, what will happen. Similarly, we have to identify our samples. M of T is a band limited signal, impulse strain that is C of T 
minus infinite to infinite, del of t minus n t s. So these are the two considerations. Then next, I need to multiply. So output is uh, of a multiplier is s of. So s of t is what m of t multiplied with c of. T. Now when I multiply, I am getting the instantaneous samples. Then next, we need to analyze it. We need to identify with respect to spectrums. So for that, we need to apply the Fourier transform to this particular equation. Now as we know that the Fourier transform has a having a property that is called multiplication property. If the Fourier transform is applied on the multiplication, the resultant will be get in terms of convolution. Okay. So here you can see S of t is equal to m of t into c of t. When you take a Fourier transform, S of t will become S omega, m of t will become m of omega, multiplication will become convolution, and c of t will become c of omega, which is whole divided by 2 pi. Now why this 2 pi? If you are representing in terms of f, did not to consider 2 pi. If you are considering in terms of omega, it can represent you have to divide one by two by four. The same equation you can write for in frequency form. S of f is equal to m of f convolution with c of f. No need to divide two by. But if you are representing in terms of omega, you need to divide this two by. Done. Next, we need to transform this c of t pulse time. Okay. So c of t will become c of omega. And this del of t minus n t s, if you take a Fourier transform of it, you will get omega s minus infinite to infinite del of t will become omega t s will become omega s. So this is the Fourier transform of c of t. Now when you are multiplying these two, now you have to substitute in this particular equation. So s of omega is equal to how much? S of omega is equal to one by two pi. m of omega convolution with c of omega that is omega s summation n is equals to minus infinite to infinite del of omega minus omega s then take the constant outside so if i am taking the constant outside it is omega s divided by 2 pi m of omega convolution with summation n is equal to minus infinite to infinite del of omega minus omega s. Okay. Now what is this omega s? Omega s is two pi f s. At this I can write two pi by p s. So 2 by 2 by 2 will cancel out, and this uh, T S will become here 1 by T S. So here I write 1 by T S summation. Take this m of the right hand side minus infinite to infinite m of omega convolution with del of omega minus n omega s then now 1 by ts is nothing but fs so here it is fs summation n is equals to minus infinite to infinite and this is having a property called m of omega multiplied with this shifting property it will become m of omega Minus n omega s. So this is our s of omega. So now, if we expand this component. That is f s summation n is equals to minus infinite to infinite m of omega minus omega n s. Now from where this m of omega minus omega n s it came? It came from this. 
convolution with the time shifting property of a impulse function to any sort of function it will become as a shifting of the original function means shifting of this m of omega okay so this uh, fx you can write again 1 by ds now since it is minus infinite to infinite means both the half the spectrum will we can be represented first spectrum if n is equal to 0 we can get m of omega plus if you substitute n value as positive okay so we will get omega minus omega s when n equals to 1 plus m of omega minus 2 omega s for n is equals to 2 dot 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 similarly for right half sequence similarly if it is for negative half sequence I will get m of omega plus omega s for n is equals to minus one plus m of omega plus two omega s for n is equals to minus two dot 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 to minus infinite. Okay. So this indicates that we are placing the modulating signal on the impulse box. How this? So if I want to represent this s of omega, okay? If I am representing s of omega, so this is your zero position. So when n is equal to zero, you will have your modulating signal that is omega m minus omega m. Done. Now if it is a right half part, the center frequency is omega s to omega. So first identify those. Uh, this is omega s. It is 2 omega s. Similarly, for the left hand side, after that some other points will be there. 3 omega s, 4 omega s, up to infinite. Similarly, it is minus omega s, and here it is minus 2 omega s. So here the spectrum will come in this manner, and spectrum will come. In this manner. Now, what it is? Let's see. Okay, and all the amplitudes are same because it will follow the modulating signal. Now, this indicates what? When n equals to zero, the modulating signal is available at n points. Then, now the modulating signal when it is shifted to omega s. Here we will get omega s plus omega m, and this point is omega s minus omega m. Done. Now what is this omega s? What it indicates? It indicates the pulse rate. What is our pulse rate? C of t. It is having a fixed amplitude. Like this. This is T S. This is two T S. This is three T S. Like this. Minus T S. Minus two T S. Okay. And the modulating signal is what? Modulating signal is like this. M of omega. Now we are placing this one on this, on this, on this, on this. So that is my output. Output of what? Output of what? instantaneous sample signal. So this is the sample signal. Okay. Now this is omega s minus omega. This position is omega s plus omega. This point is uh, 2 omega s minus omega m. And this point is this is plus. This is 2 omega s minus omega m. Similarly, this point can be written as minus omega s plus omega m. And here I can write minus omega s minus omega m. Similarly for this also we can represent. So this is the spectrum, and all the amplitude will be uniform. Just uh, make some correction. The amplitude will be uniform. Okay. So the amplitude of the sample signal is uniform. Okay. Now here you can see from omega m. 
omega s minus omega n. There is a small difference here. That means my information lies within this particular part. My information is lies within this particular part. That means this while this spectrum is not overlapping to this. This indicate what? This indicate our omega s is greater than or here you can see omega s minus omega m omega m is greater than omega n. Yes, it is greater, satisfied. So, if I will see omega s greater than 2 omega m. So, if it is f omega s is greater than 2 omega m, here I can write f s greater than 2 f m. So, this indicates what? It indicates the oversampling. It satisfies. If it is oversampling, what is the reason? An additional bandwidth is added in between the two spectrums, in between the between this spectrum as well as this spectrum. So this vacant space is called as guard band. Guard band. Remember this. This is also guard band. So what is the guard band of this? It is omega s minus omega n to omega n. So what is the bandwidth? Omega s greater than two. If you take here also, you will get omega. So that means this indicates that when the sampling was done, f s greater than 2 f m, none of the spectrums will overlap with each other, due to which no interference is generated. Interference means this spectrum may overlap on this, due to which some information of this and this get mixed up and we cannot recover the original message signal. Okay. Our motive is to extract the original modulating signal from the sample signal. So it indicates that omega s minus omega n is greater than omega m. So omega s is greater than twice omega m. So that means f s greater than 2 fm. It satisfies the oversampling. Done. Now we can see if omega s minus omega m is equal to omega m, what will happen? Okay, three cases. So till this much it is clear about instantaneous sampling. And if there is no guard band, 
and there is also no interference. Why? Because the end point of one spectrum is indicated as a starting point of another spectrum. So there is no question of overlapping of these two signals. Okay? So here, if I will solve this, omega s is equal to 2 omega m. So fs is equal to 2 fm. So this indicates what? It satisfies Nyquist criteria. Nyquist rate. Okay? So this indicates what? If the sampling was done at Nyquist rate or greater than Nyquist rate, the overlapping of the consecutive spectrums or consecutive signals may not happen. It will not happen because in this case you can see guardman is present and in this case there is no guardman but still the signals are unique in each other. They are not overlapping with each other. They are not mixing with each other. So these are the two conditions through which we can extract our original modulating signal. But if the case 3 occurs, but if case 3 occurs, case 3 means if Omega S minus Omega M is less than Omega M. Now what is this thought? This indicates my waveforms. Suppose this is the Omega M. This is minus Omega M and this is Omega M. Now it indicates that Omega S minus Omega M is less than Omega M. That means the next sample, okay, which is omega s, which will be identified as a time period T s, that it will start before it ends with respect to omega, because then only you can say here I can represent like this. So this is omega s and this is omega s minus omega m. Then only it will justify that omega s minus omega m is less than omega m for this particular case. Okay. Similarly, this is the 2 omega s. Similarly, it is 3 omega s dot dot dot. Similarly, here I can represent for minus omega s. Here I can represent for minus 2 omega s and dot dot. And having the same amplitude s of omega. Now this indicates what? This indicates that if your omega s minus omega m is less than omega, then you will get some sort of overlapping in all this spectrum. This overlapping or this intersecting of this spect consecutive spectrum will contribute to the presence of noise. And it will contribute as a presence of noise means we cannot recover the original message. So, this condition, if I will solve this, omega s less than 2 omega m, which I can say fs is less than 2 fm. So if I am providing the undersampling method, that is the first case, if fs is less than 2 fm, then this sort of intersection will come into it. If this sort of overlapping happens, means original signal cannot be recovered. It is not possible to recover the original signal. That also I will show how it is not possible. Okay? And what will happen? So if it is under sample, we cannot recover the original signal. But if it is request rate or over sampling, we can easily extract our message component. Easily. So this is all about the instantaneous sampling. Now we will discuss how to extract the signal from this sample signal. And why it is justified that why under oversampling and request criteria is basically used for extracting the original message signal if it is sampled, okay, if it is sampled at a certain frequency. But why it is not for under sampling, okay, that we will see. So I will not use uh, this spectrum. Because our filter will extract the information that we will see. Okay. The next one is called. 
if it is under sampling, it will identify the minus omega m. Here also it is minus omega m and it will extract this. But when it is extracting, it can identify the next combination. Means some error is also identified at this particular place. These all are errors. So if this is the error, I cannot recover the original message component. Here, the output is only with respect to a band unit, minus omega and the plus omega. Message signal is available. But in understanding, the other spectrum values are coming into picture and it will hamper my message signal. I cannot recover the original signal. So the response when I will identify or when I will send this under sampling through this filter, it will identify the another part of the spectrum as well as this part of the spectrum, which will hamper to your present information. So if it is hampering to your present information, it is impossible to recover the original message signal. So it is justified that your sampling frequency must be greater than equals to 2 fm in order to recover the original signal. That is called signal recovery. And questions are coming on this. They will ideate, they will ask for justification. You need to represent all this spectrum. You need to discuss about the filter and how it will extract the information. Okay. So for today, uh, we will stop at this particular point. Okay. So next class, we will discuss about natural sampling and that of sampling. Thank you.